Welcome to Rollin' Rambles. If you're a longtime viewer of this channel that actually enjoys these, you probably know that I have no problem exposing my personal political beliefs, half-baked as they might be, to the world and to express what I think so that you can take that information and do what you will with it. And today we have to talk about politics and open source software, but it's not even really the politics at this point so much as the fallout from allowing the politics to become what they have. This all kind of goes back to Gamergate in uh, 2013 or so, but even before that, Atheism Plus. Linux and open source software in general is a, it's basically an area that is populated almost entirely with nerds, or at least it was back in the day. Now there's no shortage of programmers that probably shouldn't be involved. Involved, um, It's become sort of a trend. People will gladly attempt to make some sort of BS useless contribution to the kernel that doesn't actually do anything of real value, just so they can get their name somewhere in a change log, point to it, and say, I did it. I, once upon a long time ago, contributed a fairly trivial and not entirely, <laughs> not entirely um, the best solution sort of patch to the kernel. Um, OSS drivers could cause the system to crash. And I added a divide by zero pre-check that prevented the crash, but your sound card would glitch up. But at least your computer wouldn't crash. It's a little bit of a problem if you can play sounds for a while through the older, um, the older sound API in the kernel and crash the entire system. So this was becoming a bit of a pain for me. And being able to at least recover, stop the sound and start it back up and uh, have things start working again, instead of having the whole server crash, it was kind of important. So yeah, you can imagine my contribution, trivial though it be, literally just if it equals zero, don't try to divide by zero. Um, my contribution got put in and it did something useful, at least to me, but it's also probably one of those things that could have been a security vulnerability. It's definitely a denial of service uh, vulnerability because you can literally crash a server by playing some music in user space long enough on certain systems, I suppose. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. <clears throat> the bottom line is I have the most trivial yet genuine bona fides as a kernel developer myself. And uh, a lot of people would gladly shove their name in there and it be something like I fixed a spelling error so that their name just shows up. But that's the thing is the trendy thing for the past 10 or 15 years has been for people who are politically um, largely, and I mean, there's a lot of names for it, but you know, it, it, woke is one, social justice warrior SJW is one, uh, feminist is one, um, leftist is one, but it's just generally young, big city, default Democrat, buys into whatever they're told by the default Democrats around them type people who have been co-opting anything, anything at all that they can get their hands on that has a lot of recognition and doing whatever they can to shove their name into it, shove their ideology into it, and then leave once they've destroyed the thing that they've shit upon and managed to write their name on top of the pile of shit. That is kind of how it goes with Linux, although the gatekeeping over the years, um, you do, there are too many things that rely on it to really get away with that for too long or too hard or whatever. <clears throat> Personally, I think that uh, allowing the Rust language in the kernel in 6.1 was a stupid mistake that never should have happened. You shouldn't be introducing more language paradigms to the damned kernel. That was stupid. They never should have done it. Uh, but it's there and it's probably not going away. Rust is a pet project of social justice lunatics. And of course, they had to get their pet language into the biggest kernel in the world. Because Rust is surrounded by social justice lunatics. Their forums, the Reddit stuff, people who support it, they're all social justice cuckoo nut jobs. Um, I say all, it's probably most, but 
the places that are run are cuckoo nut jobs. And this is the problem. Anything that is in the nerd domain, back in the day you got picked on for being a nerd, you were an outsider. But as the outsider stuff was seen by the mainstream um, drooling idiot normies to be better than what they had and more interesting and most importantly, becoming more popular, they of course had to come in and put their names all over it and crap all over it and say, oh, we, ju we just want to play video games or we just want to write code or we just want to be included too. In fact, if you go back to the, the Gamergate blah, blah, blah era, the early 2010s, you will find no shortage of people like Bob Chipman, a.k.a. Movie Bob, um, Dan Olson, a.k.a. Foldable Human or Foldable Folding Ideas, whatever it is. <clears throat> These people that uh, basically made the claim, oh no, we, we people that don't care about video games, we're not showing up to destroy your video games. We people who don't care about Linux aren't showing up to destroy Linux. We just want to be included. And by included, we mean you have to let us do what we want. If you're not doing that, you're not including us, therefore you're a bad person and we'll smear you socially and publicly. Nerds are highly susceptible to abuse through social channels because they tend to not be the kind of people who have a lot of social understanding. They do not have a healthy social vocabulary. They don't have their finger on the pulse of society because by their own virtue, they are nerds. They are outsiders. They have superior things. They have finely tuned superior skills, extreme knowledge. Just they are better than normies in a lot of ways because they are not part of this. But as we shift from nerds running everything to a sick cocktail of popularity bandwagon riding programmers hopping on and snowboarding down the mountain while riding Ruby code um, and all of their, their groupies following them around. Why do programmers have groupies? That's a throwback to Garrett. Um, I, maybe I'll link you if you're nice to me in, in the comments and ask. But all these, the, these trendy people, the, the, the women show up and say, hey, we don't know much about programming. We just want to be included too because you know we can see that a lot of money is made by programmers and there's a lot of clout to be had by programmers and women generally like social things. And then the men show up going, hey, hey, we're normie men, but we see there's A, a lot of money to be made. B, look at all these women all over the place circling the money train. Well, we're going to get our programmer degree, our, our, you know, our appropriation certificate, and we're going to, we're going to do the coding thing. Yes. Yeah, hello, fellow nerd. I am 10X rockstar programmer as well, because that's how I can make the money and the females. If you want to see that in action, just go watch that, uh, that strip club ish area scene in that movie. Uh, what was it? The internship? Yeah. <clears throat> Boy, that was interesting. But yeah, programmers and the, the women looking for a missus degree that orbit them, that's what really happened. They took over programming, and of course, that means they're going to take over Linux because, hey, Linux runs all this stuff, and, you know, there's a lot of money to be made in programming, so we might, you know, and everybody should learn Linux if you're a programmer. That's the OS for programmers. So a bunch of idiots who don't know what the hell they're doing show up to get the money and the women and the women show up to get the money and the clout. And before you know it, you basically have all these popular kids pretending to be good programmers shitting up the place. Then, then, after the Gamergate, social justice warrior, Tumblr feminist era was winding down a bit, then we entered the Troon era. Now, what's a Troon? You've probably seen this term. It's, it looks like Tron, but somebody accidentally put another O. Um, loosely defined, a troon is somebody, usually, actually almost always, a male who is pretending to be male to female trans, putting on the clothes perhaps, usually dyeing their hair, letting it grow out, basically playing female, but they're not genuine trans people. They don't want to actually accept a female lifestyle. The reason that they've gone male to female 
is not because they have gender dysphoria and they feel like they're not like they they're not in the right body or whatever it's because they realize that if they continue to go along with the leftism with the social justice warrior trend with the tumblr feminist everything is racist everything is sexist trend well it was losing its teeth and that means that they don't have any power anymore they can't kick people around anymore and continue to infiltrate and get all that sweet sweet money and pussy <clears throat> so how do they get that sweet sweet money and pussy well the trick is uh i'm a girl now i'm 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 pretending to be a girl now because if you're a man no one gives a shit about you no one cares about men men don't matter why don't men matter because men are disposable and nobody really gives a crap about men that that's pretty much it they're just disposable a man is basically this being that is supposed to perform slave labor for some slave labor or for someone with a vagina and die that's pretty much it if that slave labor is going to war so that the vagina doesn't die so be it or the vagina products don't die so be it if it, if it means going to a hard factory job at high risk of serious injury or death so that you can bring home money so that the vagina can be comfy then so be it you know that that that's that was the male's role in society the thing is men happily accepted it because that's the way that things were that's the way the gender roles were it wasn't people telling you you had to do it quite as much as just the fact that for the society to function a long time ago men had to labor and women had to home make and there was not really a lot in the way of exceptions or whatever. I mean, there's always outliers, but that's the way it used to be. But now, now anybody can be anything. The, all the barriers are basically gone. In fact, the barriers today, 2024, largely exist to block out men, particularly white men, double particularly straight men, quadruple particularly straight white men, the triad of Satanism of evil, of everything wrong with the world, according to the blue church of leftism. And so what do you do if you're a straight white male with minimal talent, very much a midwit, not very smart, but you want to make that sweet program and money. You want to get access to that sweet program and social clout. You want to wield power over people. You want to be able to hurt people all day long because you're the boss. You want to have that control. You want to even maybe have that punani i'm a trans lesbian with a penis and i would like to i would like to fornicate with you fellow programmer woman um so yeah and if if they refuse well you're bigoted against trans people you're a transphobe if anybody says anything against you you're a transphobe and you can sick a social justice mob on them you can sick a huge twitter mob on them solely on the basis of the fact that they're not trans and you are claiming to be, even though you don't have a genuine belief, you are claiming to be for the purposes of co-opting that power in society so that you can hurt anybody who opposes you. It's almost like being a supervillain. So the Troon Revolution comes in, um, and in Linux, this is spearheaded by, um, I would say, the most prominent um, person in, the, in that would be Sarah Sharp who became, um, what was that stupid name Sarah Sharp ended up with? Is like Sage Sharp? Well, ironically, going the other way, female to male, became ugly as all female to male seem to do for some reason. Um, just, you know, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna change gender now. And then using that to crowbar people. Um, her little beta orbiter, Matthew Garrett, classic social justice warrior, uh, made sure to swing around and protect her, even forking Linux to make his own Linux with blackjack and tranny hookers. Yeah, because I'm Matthew Garrett. Ooh. Um, which he made a few commits to, and no one ever cared, and it of course didn't work because that was stupid. So, Linux has been fully taken over by these freaks that do not care about Linux. And it's all of computing, everything. Um, tech companies actively recruit against straight white males. They, they specifically say, we won't hire white males. We won't even hire black males that look too white. We want people to look like us. That, that recent IBM fiasco, where they're like, yeah, we ain't going to hire any white people at all. If they look white, they're not coming in here. That, that went over real well, didn't it? 
But that's the thing, is that all of this tech stuff, when it became popular, and every scumbag popularity contest idiot and power-seeking loser with no self-confidence, no value to society shows up and pulls all the social strings they can to screw with everyone so that they have power over them, well, they shit up the spaces because they don't give a crap about them anymore. Or they never did. They never gave a crap about them. They, they showed up for all the wrong reasons, and they knew what to do to make sure that the poor nerds who created everything in the first place couldn't resist them. So, <clears throat> what I'm trying to get to with this, there is a big cancer in all of modern tech. This is especially prominent in open source. I would argue it is worse in open source software than it is even in big tech corporations. For all the leftism that Google and Apple and Netflix and Facebook and all, and all of these companies, LinkedIn, you name it, <clears throat> for all of the leftist nonsense that they have publicly and loudly subscribed to that has gotten them in hot water because they literally went out there and said, we're actively anti-racist, so we block white people from being hired in violation of Title VII. <laughs> we, we are here, our PR team is proud to report that we publicly and proudly violate all of the labor laws that the United States has had since the Civil Rights Act of 1964 was put into place. But th that's the thing, is that they don't care. They don't care. They exist solely at this point as a jumping off point. It's something, they're like vampires. They show up, they stick their teeth in, they suck the thing dry, use it as a jumping off point so that they can jump to a higher rung and keep going. It's happened with all of your favorite Hollywood properties from your childhood, from your parents' childhood. It's happened with any successful property, gone. Any successful project, gone. It's all been taken over by these lunatics. And the crux of my point here is that that includes every nonprofit that any major open source project is supposedly funded by. Mozilla Foundation, Gnome Foundation, Linux Foundation. Of the three, arguably the Linux Foundation at least spends a million dollars a year on Torvalds, the guy who runs Linux who, by the way, his social justice warrior, Tumblr feminist Nazi daughter, uh, decided that it was, uh, you know, that she would bully him into, say, oh, dad, you're, you're just a bigoted old man who needs to learn better. And there was that bully letter that had Unicode characters in it, so he clearly didn't write it, and so on and so forth. That's a story for another day. Bottom line, these nonprofits that supposedly fund open source software, they don't actually fund open source software. Mozilla Foundation, okay, Mozilla, when they ousted Brendan Eich because he donated to some anti-abortion or anti-gay or something, I can't even remember at this point. He donated like two grand to some, I think it was anti-gay proposition on a, uh, a campaign for a California ballot initiative. I don't know. Um, it's not important. As soon as they ousted him for his political donations in the past, that was the death knell for Mozilla. Ever since, it's been rainbow-haired bugs selling out the browser, um, selling it out to Microsoft or Google or whoever will come by with the most amount of money to pay for the search engine to be the default. And whoever wants to pay money for all the, all the stuff that they mine from users and whoever wants to sponsor, you know, a bunch of spam in your browser homepage and send your searches and, you know, just data mine the crap out of people. But I thought it was supposed to be free and open source software that respects your privacy and so on. No, no. It's a bunch of purple and blue haired lunatic, uh, fake trans people and leftists that don't care that much about the browser so much as having their name prior to an at Mozilla.org email account. They're there for clout. They're there because they want to make money and clout and that's it. it it's all about the money and the clout. There's no nobility anymore. The Gnome Foundation, oh my God, the Gnome Foundation. If you think the Gnome Foundation does anything for Gnome, go watch, there's a video Brian Lunduke put out a day ago as of this recording. <clears throat> it's, a, it's like Linux sucks 2024. And he talks about it. I think the figure is like 2% of all the money they make actually gets spent on Gnome development. Dude, your foundation's name is Gnome Foundation. Don't give the Gnome Foundation money for Gnome. That, Money, any money you give to them does not get spent on that. 
look, if I if you gave me a thousand dollars and I spent twenty dollars of that on the thing you gave me, like you say you gave me a thousand dollars to um, let let's say you gave me a thousand dollars to build you a deck on your house, and I spent nine hundred eighty dollars on um, AI uh, AI programs and crypto and some other random BS like that, uh, diversity initiatives, and I spent $20 building you a deck. Hey, um, that, that that's a nice pair of two-by-fours dangling from your door, bro. That's a great job. Well, you'd be pissed. You'd be really pissed, wouldn't you? You'd be pretty friggin' furious. You'd be suing me. You'd, you'd be like, oh, well, you know, I, I'm gonna go after your insurance or, you know, you're, you're bonded or whatever. I'm gonna go after that. You would not just be sitting there going, oh, okay, well, I gave that money for a deck, but, you know, these two planks, they'll be fine because it's in service of greater cause. And that cause is dicking around with AI, crypto, and putting different colors on uh, symposium attendee bracelets or some shit for diversity. Yeah, that'd go over real well, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Same thing with the Linux Foundation. They spend very little of the money that they get on the actual kernel or on the actual system surrounding it. All that money goes to waste. They spend it on bullshit. All of these foundations spend almost all of the money on bullshit. And in the end, everything is getting just a little bit worse over time. The software gets a little more bloated every year. The software gets more glitchy, more problematic. Um, tie-ins to system D get deeper every year. You know, nobody gives a rat's ass about your freedom anymore. Nobody gives a rat's ass about your ability to choose your privacy. Nobody cares. You, you are a data cow. You're a data cow that they're going to mine the milk out of, mine that data milk until you are left dry on the side of the road and they kick you to the curb and go find another cow to start siphoning the data out of their honkers too. That's all there is to it. This cancer in open source software needs to die. And it is a cancer. It is a massive cancer. And I know I've made videos like this before. I know I've touched on this subject more than once in in several previous videos. But the difference in this one is that I'm here to tell you the cancer is institutional at this point. It has been for a while, but the numbers that are coming out are so blatant that it is impossible for you to stand around and go, oh, that makes sense. You know, you, you can't just sit there and go, oh, if I give money to the GNOME Foundation, maybe they'll finally make it so that their file browser doesn't do really dumb shit and have really, really big empty spaces around all of their file icons so that I can see eight files at a time on my monitor. You know, they're never gonna fix that. They're gonna spend that money on their rainbow haired freak buddies. That's all they're gonna do. They're gonna, it's, it's all corrupt trash. And the funny thing about it is, there is one extremely simple solution to this problem. And that is, don't give them your money. Don't give them any more money. Find out where they get their money and go to those people and get them to stop giving them money. You need to find a way to stop giving them money. And if you've not been giving them money, that's fine. But maybe the problem is that, you know, you you use the software too. I mean, the software sucks. This is part of the reason that I've gotten really blackpilled on Linux lately. It's like, it's not that I don't like Linux. It's not not that I don't use it. I have a laptop that only has ever had that. And I use it all the time. It's not that I don't use it. It's that, you know, what am I supposed to do? If, If I have to pick between a bag of piss and a pile of shit... You know, at least, at least the shit will cover less surface area of my skin when I use it to get my work done. (laughs) It might smell a little worse, you know, it might be a little harder to wash off, but you know, at least, at least it makes, you know, a a smaller mess. And that's kind of what it's like when, if you have to pick between like Windows and GNOME, you know, which one do you want? And I guess I'm just going to pick the shitty Windows over the pissy GNOME. Because at a minimum, even though there are a lot of things to hate about it, Windows gets the fucking job done. Windows 10 specifically is what I'm talking about. 11, that's a whole other can of worms, but um, some of these Linux things, even even Windows 11 still does better than that. 
at least you can turn on Compact View in File Explorer, whereas not in File Explorer, you know, if you're in GNOME, it's just, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, I don't want to get back into the the whole File Explorer thing. Um, the bottom line with, the, with this whole thing, the, the whole point is that these nonprofit foundations, these organizations that claim to exist to fund Linux and associated projects, the things that make up your Linux desktop, they're bullshit. They're all bullshit. They, they don't spend the money on what they say they do. And I understand that a nonprofit can't spend 100% of its funds on the thing that they say they're supposed to, you know, be working on. <clears throat> but look, dude, you can't even spend 10%? Really? You can't you can't even spend 10%? 2%? What what is this 2% crap? What is this? Two, you, 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 you spend 2% of your total income for the year on the project that your income is supposed to be funding. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty terrible. And if if you weren't some nonprofit that probably some scumbags at IBM or whoever are donating tons of money to, if you didn't have that funding source, yeah, I'd do whatever I could to just choke you off and get rid of you. Because you are a cancer. You're siphoning money out of the ecosystem so that you can just give it to all your rainbow hair buddies. And, and that's it. You're a cancer. You need to die like a cancer. Cancer needs to go. Cut it out aggressively. Do not stand for cancer. You know, get rid of cancer. The cure for cancer is don't give it money. Don't give it attention. Don't give it clout. Anything that it infects, you need to choke it off until it dies. That's how you deal with it in the real world. Well, I don't, I don't know anybody that directly gives actual, like, cancer money. But, hey, you know, the Gnome Foundation exists. So I guess I learned something today. Oh, boy. Open source is pretty screwed if things keep going the way they are. Now, <clears throat> I'm, I mean this sincerely. I have no organization. I have no... Oh, great, great. The clock ticked. Um, I, I have nothing set up. I have no business plan or, um, you know, I don't have any sort of incorporation. I don't have anything filed. I don't have anything. But I mean this in, in all earnestness. If somebody was to give me a fraction of the money that the Mozilla Foundation or the Gnome Foundation or the Linux Foundation, let's say some, let's say somebody, somebody who would normally give me uh, or get, give these foundations or whatever, let's say, that, let's say they took a hundred grand, okay? And I'm going to say a hundred grand um, post-tax because I would have to pay taxes. So let's say they gave me whatever amount of money I needed that after I gave the tax cut of it or whatever up, uh, I assume that's the point of a nonprofit, so you don't have to do that. But let's say that uh, that that they gave me a hundred grand to write open source software, write a new operating system, a new browser, whatever. I promise you, promise you, if I was getting a fraction of the money that these bastard foundations in that claim to be for open source but really just exist to line the pockets of their corrupt buddies, if I got a fraction of that money, I would spend all of my working hours all of the time, and I would hire people to do it with me. I would not have people over the internet randomly doing it with me. I would hire actual people that could do it with me and be beholden only to me, not to some stupid project, okay? I would spend all of my time working on it. I would have these other people that I brought on spend at least half a day, if not all of their day, also working on it with me developing a new system that would not have these problems. I would set up a nonprofit. I would set up an organization that did not suffer from all of this crap. I would not allow the cancer to come in. And I guess part of the problem with nonprofits is that the people that are involved can take over the board and stuff like that. Um, so maybe I don't do the nonprofit thing. Screw it. Maybe it is a for-profit corporation on paper, but we operate with non-profit principles. Maybe that's what we do. I don't know. I don't know what to do. Um, but I would do whatever I had to do to set up a system whereby these people could not come in and take over the company, could not take over the organization, could not take over the project. I would make what I built source available, not open source, so that other people could not just show up, grab the source, screw with it, make it their own, rebrand it and resell it or whatever. I would protect 
the work while it was being developed so that other people could not use it until it was ready to be used. And so that once it was actually production ready, it would not be something that they could, like I said in another video, make their own file browser or file explorer replacement um, that, you know, like the problem with Linux is that there's so much width and no depth. Features are missing from, you know, basic features missing from basic software like a file explorer. You know, that kind of stuff, I just can't stand for that crap. It, you should not have, <clears throat> a, you shouldn't have programs with file picker boxes where you can't even see thumbnails for a friggin' image editing program. S such fundamental stupid things. And they'll work on all this other stuff, but nobody does anything about that. Nobody solves that arguably much bigger problem than, uh, oh, we want, we, uh, we want to add 32 bit floating point, um, pixel representation in the, in, in GIMP or something. You know, and I understand that that may be pretty easy for them to implement. I don't know, but it's, it's just so stupid to me that such basic things are broken in open source software. Then on top of it, you got these, these entities that claim they're going to work on it and, and hey, give us money and we'll, we might be able to fix it for you guys. <clears throat> you give them the money and they spend it all on hookers and booze. Or at least they may as well spend it on hookers and booze because it doesn't go to fixing the software. You, you probably threw the money at them to fix in the first place. So yeah, do you guys want me to start a business where you can just fork me tens of thousands of dollars and all I'll do is build something to ruin the days of all of these people, of Adobe, the GNOME Foundation, Microsoft, Linux Foundation, all of these scumbags that have co-opted, taken over and destroyed everything that you and I love and hold dear in the world of open source software, in the world of any software. Should I set up a business whose sole purpose is to de and shitify the world? Let me know. Let me know if you'd throw money at something like that. I'd love to know. And for the guy who sent me like 561, I think it was in American dollars, thank you. I appreciate it. I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I promise you I'll write a few lines of code in your honor, my friend. Have a good one. Like, comment, subscribe, and all that nonsense.